This is the first video of two with regards to an introduction to transport refrigeration. So there's a big difference between transport refrigeration systems and other types of refrigeration systems. Basically, one is mobile and one isn't. Transport refrigeration is designed for various ambient temperatures and operating conditions. You don't know where that container or truck is going to be. It's either going to be in the desert of um, Arizona or it could even be up in the wilderness of Alaska. It must be well designed to withstress the stress and vibration that also occurs during transport. Depending on the type, size, and purpose of the primary system, a backup system may also be installed to prevent loss of cooling in case the primary unit fails. This is an example of what you can see in, of the refrigeration circuit and the parts in a transport system. You have additional valves, you have additional shutoff valves, you have vibration absorbers, you have a thing we call a quench valve, which we'll talk about in a minute. The main components of truck and trailer refrigeration systems are a compressor, an air-cooled condenser, a thermostatic expansion valve, a direct expansion evaporator. The systems you typically use a one and a half horsepower to a two horsepower compressor and most often use 134A or 404A refrigerant. 134A is used for medium and high temperature refrigeration. The properties of 404A make it suitable for use in medium and low temperature refrigeration. Both refrigerants have a low toxicity and flammability, making them safe for transport refrigeration. Components specific to truck and trailer refrigeration include a quench valve, a subcooler, a hot gas solenoid valve, and vibration absorbers. And again, you see these in here. We have our vibration absorbers where my mouse pointer is currently. We have a quench valve, which we'll talk about more in a minute. And then we also have a subcooler. The quench valve is a thermostatic expansion valve that acts as a liquid injection valve from the liquid line to the suction line. During low load periods, not much refrigerant is required for cooling, so less refrigerant is passed into the evaporator from the high side. Remember that suction vapor is often used to cool the compressor, so when less refrigerant is available, the compressor temperatures can rise and cause overheating. The quench valve monitors this with a sensing bulb on the discharge line. When necessary, the quench valve opens to inject a small amount of liquid refrigerant into the suction line. That liquid refrigerant quickly evaporates and flows into the compressor to cool it. The subcooler occupies a portion of the condenser and removes additional heat from the refrigerant leaving the liquid receiver to help ensure that only liquid refrigerant enters the TXV. Vibration absorbers are placed in the suction and discharge lines to, in, to decrease vibration. Refrigerated trailers, sometimes called reefers, require special trailer bodies that are typically 28 feet to 53 feet long. They're light and well insulated. The boxes are usually fiberglass composite or metal wall construction with various thickness and types of insulation to fill the space between the inner and outer walls depending on the application. The most often used insulation is spray foam. A trailer carrying frozen goods must be insulated for negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Fresh food requires insulation for temperatures in the range of 32 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Fresh Produce, flowers, and fruits also need accurate temperature, accurate control of humidity and ventilation because these products have a tendency to lose fluids to the surrounding air. The refrigeration system used in most trailers are similar to other systems. The major difference is the method to use the compressor, to drive the compressor. There are two common ways. First, a diesel-powered generator on the trailer supplies electrical power to the compressor. And then the refrigeration system is plugged into the electrical grid while the trailer is idle. This is referred to as standby power. This is just an example of a trailer containing a diesel-powered generator. 
diesel powered refrigeration system and then the refrigeration system controls are on the side. Refrigerated trucks are similar to refrigerated trailers. A cube style or a flat style evaporator is mounted on the wall inside the box of the truck. The condenser and condenser fans are mounted in a case on the roof or on the front of the truck box. In small capacity trucks, the compressor is typically mounted in the engine compartment and driven by the engine. So this is just an example of a cutaway of a small box style um, refrigerated truck. You have your evaporator that's inside the box, your condenser is there on the top, and the compressor is in the engine compartment with the refrigeration lines connecting the two. Some trucks include both a compressor driven off the vehicle's engine and a separate engine generator and standby compressor. Having an external generator allows the refrigeration system to continue to run even when the vehicle is off. Thermal King, again, you'll see is one of the most frequent ones we see around. Nose mounted unit, you see the ventilation slots for the condenser, truck box is behind it, truck cab is usually under it. A remote control module inside a refrigerated truck allows the driver to control the system. The remote control module includes an electronic temperature control, temperature selector, and defrost controls. Most truck systems use hot gas for the defrost process. Using electric would just be too much power and have more than available. The eupedic plates okay, is another type of truck and trailer refrigeration system. It provides passive refrigeration. A eukaryotic plate is a thin rectangular tank that contains an evaporator surrounded by a solution that freezes at a desired temperature. Refrigerant flow through the evaporator freezes the solution, which is called a eutetic solution. Once the solution is frozen, the refrigeration system can be shut down and the plates alone provide many hours of refrigeration. This is also called passive cooling. Okay, once the mechanical portion is disconnected, the passive cooling provides the cooling. It's almost like having a big ice pack in the box. This is just an example of it. Your plates are here. Okay, your plates are over in the on the wall of the cat of the truck. You have a thermostatic expansion valve, the evaporator is inside the plates. The this is a the plates contain a frozen solution that will then provide coolness to the big cooler that's sitting in. Again, think of it as a frozen, one of those blue ice packs that you use in your cooler in the summer months. The plates may be housed inside a shroud with blower fans on the top. The fans draw in the warm box air, force it over the surface of the plates. The condensing unit for a unit with plates may be permanently mounted on a truck like a nose mount unit. However, smaller delivery trucks that are returned to the shop at the end of the day, the condensing unit is often a portable unit that's separate from the truck. When the deliveries are complete, the portable condensing unit is connected to the plates. This portable condensing unit contains the compressor, the condenser, the filter dryer, and the metering device. The end of the evaporator coil then protrudes from the plates and are equipped with quick disconnect fittings. The quick disconnect fittings allow the condensing unit to be connected and disconnected without refrigerant loss. So this is just an example of a portable condensing unit. You have quick disconnect fittings on the outside of the truck. Okay, everything is in this condensing unit, including the metering device. Okay. The eutetic plates are commonly called cold plates, holding plates, or hold plates. So that's the end of our part one. That's an introduction. We'll go further into this in the part two video.